Well, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Paul Morawski, and I'm the Director of Marketing and Trademark Licensing at Yale University. Um, I'd like to also introduce my colleague, Leanne Minatoli, who is the Assistant Director and also the Head of uh, Business Development and Licensing for our area. Um, she is, uh, is uh, one of my, uh, my key, the key players within our uh, department and focuses a lot on the marketing materials that come out of our office. Um, just a, a little bit on, on my background. Um, I have been in uh, marketing and licensing um, and merchandising over 40 years. Um, primarily, I spent the first 17 years of my uh, experience in um, senior levels in de major department stores, such as Macy's and May Company. Um, I've held the position of head of licensing and retail at the American Museum of Natural History. Um, I had my own consulting business where I also opened an, a, uh, a startup during my time there called Terraforma. And most recently, um, I came I, from a company called TCC Global, which is a London-based marketing company, and I ran their brand operation for the United States. Um, I, have been with, um, I have been with Yale about five years, and what I'd like to talk to you today is about how the Department of the Marketing and Trademark Licensing, its role within the university, and how that ties into Size Center and the projects that come out of that. So first, I'd like to go to and just give you an over overview of the of how things look as far as the roles of our department. So most important is the, is the number one thing that we handle is the protection of the Yale name and its marks. And we do this three ways. Uh, first is our licensing programs. And licensing programs, um, what they do is we have, a, we have a, what it does is it helps ensure the positioning of our mark in the United States and also our marks globally. And what it also does, it, it also establishes and helps to protect the brand because of its proliferation around the world. Um, in addition, through also in licensing, we support departments who are very interested in wanting to do certain types of specific products or specific marketing materials they may be working on, whether they're collaborating with another university or another department, and we can, we can help with that role. We also work with the student organizations to make sure they are maintaining the proper use of the UEL name. Um, that includes event marketing materials, um, things like swag. Um, also, uh, we all do all the approvals on the student org websites. So anything that all the websites before they launch, go through student affairs, then run through our office um, for review and approval. In addition, but on a very limited basis, we also work with external consultants and contractors on allowing the use of the Yale name in certain instances. And that indirectly does relate to size city. And I'll explain that in a little bit. And on the third and under protection of the Yale name and marks is enforcement. And to give you an idea, uh, four years ago, we dealt with about 140 issues of enforcement of misuse of the Yale marks throughout the United States, throughout the world. Um, you'd be surprised how many people actually try to use the Yale name, think they're allowed to do it when in fact it is all trademarked and licensed uh, through the Department of, of, through OGC. Also, one of the things that we do is because we have a group of international agents in over five continents, they also help with the enforcement. So if they see something out there, a misuse of the year mark in some way, shape or form, what they do is inform us, then we evolve OGC and we take actions accordingly. So I'll give you some more perspective on that, just as of some background and detail. What the, as I mentioned, the global licensing programs, they bolster the awareness of the university, strengthen our ability to stop the misuse of the L name and marks. Also, what we, have, what we do is anybody we license, we also have a high level of social compliance. And what that means is we require anybody who does business with Yale to be either a member of the Fair Labor Association or the Ethical Trade Initiative to ensure that all social compliances are followed. Uh, we have many companies who come to us want to be a licensee, don't belong to one of those groups, won't, won't join them, so they will not become a Yale licensee. So we do we like to think that we have very strong guidelines to make sure that social compliance is followed to its utmost. Um, in addition, what we do is we spend a lot of time, probably the department we liaise with the most is OGC, Office of General Counsel. And what we do is we make sure that when the um, U mark is used, it is not used to in endorse commercial entities or private enterprise. And what that means is that the Yale name cannot be positioned on a website or marketing materials for a company that is commercial in nature because that means an endorsement and Yale cannot endorse because of our not-for-profit status. And when an issue comes up, when if somebody is misusing the mark, 
We do work directly with OGC. We issue cease and desist letters. And 90% of the time, the letters that come from our office are enough to correct the issue, have the mark taken down, have the website adjusted. But if that doesn't, if that doesn't work, then we turn it over to council, who then turns it over to local council within the area to address. And that primarily has happened a couple of times in Europe and a couple of times in the Asian market over the past couple of years. The second role for Yale for our department is the marketing of the Yale brand, thus the name marketing and trademark licensing. And we have our department manages about 170 licensing programs around the world. And in 2022, calendar 2022, we will, the brand will be positioned in about 80 countries worldwide. Because one of the roles of this office is to market the Yale brand on a global basis. Uh, obviously, we're very, very well known domestically, a very strong domestic license program, and now is growing exponentially within the world um, global programs that we work with um, through our agents located in London, um, Tokyo, Hong Kong, Toronto, and the Middle East. And the other thing we do um, in, a, in a smaller way, but still happens from time to time, is filming and photography. And we work with the Office of Public Affairs on this. So any film or photography that's being done on campus could, that is commercially related would run through our office for to making sure the proper standards are covered, insurance, uh, making sure security is in place, making sure whatever is filmed is appropriate. I mean, one of the things you may not know is that actually one of the Indiana Jones movies were actually filmed here on the Yale campus several years ago. You know, in addition, we also do things, we do photography sessions, for example, people like Vineyard Vines will come on campus, uh, pay a fee to be able to photograph, and it also helps market the Yale, Yale name in a, in a very aggressive fashion. The second area we look at that we work with is with the student organizations, and um, you, you can see here that there are specific rules laid out, and this is an overview of the guidelines of how the Yale name will be used within student organizations. So basically what it, what it does is it just is a check and balance to make sure that it, things are being done properly. Um, the guidelines that we put in place um, were, were crafted with my office along with the Office of General Counsel and were signed off on by the Secretary's office. So just to give you a, a touch on a couple of these points so you can see the, some of the highlights that we take a look at. Uh, anytime a student wants to use the EL name, they have to indicate that they are a student organization um, the, the group logos, including Yale, they must be reviewed by our office and they must use their full registered name because they also, there is an insurance issue re regarded to that. So when a student group signs up with student affairs, they must use the whole name from, for, legal, for, for legal reasons. Other guidelines that we keep a look on is that to make sure the student name of a group is conspicuously located on the site, must include a disclaimer, and also any email addresses or website addresses must use the university assigned address. They can't create their own .coms, for example, because again, that will be commercializing the Yale name, which is not allowed. And here's a couple of examples of some of the student websites that, that we have reviewed and have approved. You can see here the Yale Undergraduate Quantum Computer, Computing Speaker Series, Yale Undergraduate Moot Court, and one thing you'll notice on the bottom of this is that there is a disclaimer saying that these are the, the Yale University's registered trademark, et cetera, and the activities in this website are specific to the student organization involved. So again, just kind of check and balance to make sure everything is moving along, you know, as, as per the university guidelines. The next area, and this is beginning now to more focus in with Size City a little bit, is the use of the name by outside consultants and contractors. And this can be a... Um, rather sensitive area because there are a lot of uh, corporations, companies that do business with Yale one way, shape or form. And by doing it, there is a sometimes a misconception that, hey, I work with Yale, that gives me the right to market and say that and use the Yale mark, which is not the case. Anybody who does, any company who does business with Yale University, they may list on their website they do uh, business with Yale, but they cannot market it further than that. So because Yale cannot promote or endorse, again, because of our not-for-profit status. And you know, to, give you, to give you an example, um, a couple of years ago, uh, the computer, oh, there was a, a very well-known computer company uh, reached out to SOM, as a matter of fact, wanting to supply computers to them uh, with the understanding that they could then market that on their website. 
basically that is play a pay for play, which we don't allow. And that's something that we had to turn down in my office. So the rules for anybody that does consulting and does contract work is if they want to use the Yale name, it has to be a direct reference of the department they work in. Um, it must not in any way appear conspicuous. And how the mark is presented has to be approved by the Yale Marketing and Trademark Licensing Office. And what we have here, I think, is a good example. Um, this is a, a company called Square 360. Um, they are a contactless payment system program, um, again, associated with the Yale School of Management. And you can see here that follow all the rules. Um, they're not using the Yale mark. It's in alphabetical order and also tags the name of the department that they're working on, working with. So again, this meets all the standards that are required by the university and as far as use of marks and names. And now specific to Sci Center, Sci City, excuse me. This is a relatively new area for our department to start working with. So it's a I want to say a work in progress, but at least we have some general guidelines here that I think will help the students when they work with corporations to understand what the what the guidelines are for use of the Yale name. So the way we best can describe it is, um, do we suggest that students market this by using a bio, bio, biographical in nature, such as giving a background of well, what the degree is, uh, what their high degree is, what their what their undergraduate degree is, um, and so forth. And the, the kind of the, the the interesting issue here is, is if there is a company or a corporation that works with a student at Sci, in Sci City, and they also have a contract with the university to work in another department, they can then use use the name, Yale name, as I mentioned earlier, putting it in alphabetical order, ensuring that it's you know there's the mark isn't used, and so forth. If a company does not have a uh, agreement with Yale to work in any department, but is working in Size City, they cannot use the Yale name. So what we try to do is I try to put together a, a good example of how a student group starting out a pro starting out a project may want to advertise, or excuse me, may not try to market and use the Yale name in an appropriate manner. So what I, what I have here, this is an this is an example coming from MIT. And you, you, you'll see that um, this happens to be a, 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 a product that was developed uh, through MIT's, I think it's, a, it's called a capstone program. I guess it's somewhat similar to Size City in a way. And these MIT students put together some, it's a, the way I understand it's a, some sort of de-icing fluid that prevents ice dams. So again, it was something that was developed through them. And, and you can see in the overview, the, in the where it says the company happens to be called Flow F L O E, and you can see um, first line you know by MIT students. So I think, you know, from a from a you know from a marketing perspective, I mean, certainly that would be something that would be acceptable. At Yale, you know, quite honestly, they probably could have been a little bit more bold in how they call that out and taking advantage of that because it's a statement of fact. And then when it comes to the biography that ties to this, these are the three people who who. Um, were part of the development. You can see um, they're the CEO, graduate fellow at Yale University, the chief technology officer, graduate of MIT, the chief product officer, again, a graduate of MIT. So again, it, it is a example of using the, you know, the, using the university's name in an appropriate manner, but also including in the biographical detail that not only speaks to the product itself, but it, it speaks to educational background of the people who have developed it, which I think is very important. Again, this is a situation here where it probably could have been played up a little bit more. The fact that you know, uh, David was somebody who graduated from you know, with a fellowship or had a fellowship at Yale. Um, the you know, Hector was a graduate of MIT. That could have been played up a little bit bigger, I think, from, from a marketing standpoint on this. But again, this gives you an example of how program a program from a, 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 a similar institution at like Yale has developed something at their um, incubation center, I'll call it, and then it has marketed it in an appropriate manner that would also be acceptable to Yale. So this kind of gives you an overview of, you know, how we see these programs uh, playing out. Um, there's always a lot of questions on these things. There's always a lot of gray area. Can we do this? Can we do that? And hopefully this presentation or this deck will give you a little bit of a guideline of what can and can't be done. But if questions arise, I mean, the, the thing to do is we, we deal with many different departments of the university we would be happy to answer any questions to make sure things are going along as 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 they should be and uh, we have students come over to our office so many times we 
go visit other departments to discuss these issues. So we're happy to anytime help you in any of the projects that you're working on to make sure that Yale name is used properly. That was awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Um, also, Flow is a Size City company too. Say again. The Flow, the company you mentioned, actually works out of Size City too. Oh, I didn't know that. So well, that's <laughs> yeah. it. Well, there you go. Okay, that's a perfect. <laughs> that's a perfect. But um, so hopefully this gives yeah. gives an overview. On